So Saba, obviously it's been a very tumultuous time, I think, for Muslims all across Britain at the moment. How are you feeling and how are the community responding to what's been going on? I think we are living in times where it's concerning. It's sad to see what we're seeing on our streets. People are destroying brown people's property. It's completely wrong. We are seeing hotels with migrants in that are being burnt. Naturally, people will be more cautious when leaving their homes. I know Muslim women have said that they're not leaving their homes anymore on their own. And even when I leave the house, I do look over my shoulder sometimes. It's not nice to leave your house feeling fearful. And we all hope and pray that this comes to an end soon. And how do you think it can come to an end, this, this rioting and this hatred that we're seeing right now? The violence we've seen on our streets has stemmed from a few different reasons. Misinformation has been a massive cause of this. Another root cause of this is how the media portray Muslims and the negative headlines they put out there about the Muslim community and also migrants. It's really important to recognise the positive contributions that migrants and Muslims have made to this country. Muslims do so many amazing things across the world. There are over a billion Muslims across the world and majority, majority of them are peace-loving individuals. Also, we have to look at the positive contribution migrants have made to this country. We can look at the NHS. My dad's been a civil servant for over 30 years and I feel like he's been a credit to this country. What's also really important is the government allowing asylum seekers to work when they come to this country, allowing them to contribute to society, allow them to make an honest living. Because when migrants are put into hotels and accommodation, naturally, that will create frustration within people. So I think addressing the root causes are really important to remove and stop out any extremism. So Nigel Farage responded to the Southport stabbings by um, sort of implying that the truth might be being withheld and I think he's now been criticised quite a lot for potentially creating a lot of the misinformation that led to this rioting. When a politician, you know, an elected MP acts like that, how does it make you feel and how, do you, how would you respond to him? Misinformation has been a reason why violence has erupted on our streets. It's important to note that people in power have influence. Their words have a direct impact on the society which we live in. It's also really important that social media platforms take responsibility for what they put on their platforms. So one other comment that came out in recent days, Robert Jenrick, who's running for Tory leadership, said that people shouting Alu Akbar should be arrested. He's since faced a lot of criticism, but he's defended the comments. As a Muslim, do you think that's him misunderstanding Islam? What do you think about his comments? It's a complete misunderstanding to think that the word Allah Akbar has anything to do with violence and terror. That word's been hijacked. Allah Akbar basically means God is the greatest. And Muslims say this word over a hundred times a day. It's really important to understand the meaning behind the word and how Muslims use it. If Allah Akbar had any connotations of violence and terror, then over a billion Muslims will be calling for violence every day, but they're not. So it's really important to understand what the word means before taking it out of context. The violence that we are seeing from these extremists has an undertone of Islamophobia and racism. Violence is never an answer. Conversation and dialogue is really important. People who think that Islam is religion of violence and terror are misinformed. Islam is actually a religion of peace. And we know this because if you look at the actions of over a billion Muslims across the world, we will see that they are peace-loving individuals. So my message to someone who maybe has a distorted image of Islam is to maybe meet a Muslim, ask the questions that they have, and learn firsthand what life is like as a Muslim and what Islam teaches. Do you think that some of these rioters, if you were able to speak to them, are you confident that you, that you might be able to break through, that there would be common ground there, that opinions would change with that conversation? I spoke to many people who have a different opinion to what I have. And once you have a conversation, we learn that the misinformation that they have has come from places or individuals who have no knowledge about a certain topic. So talking to a person who lives a certain way of life is really important to understanding the true message of a faith or a religion.